So I was in the middle of a software installation on my Corel 386 over there when the computer I was using to do the floppy drive creation, well the floppy drive failed. So now I'm going to get that machine out of there and replace the floppy drive. So let's do that on this video. Okay, I went ahead and took the machine out. And it's actually very simple to take this one apart. Because these are designed, these shuttle machines are, they are designed to be serviced very easily. So there's a couple of thumb screws in the case that we need to remove. Side panel comes off. Now comes the fun part, trying to get this drive cage out. Now it's a little tight, but uh, getting the drive cage out was relatively easy, other than it's being tight. That might be a real pain to put back together, but we can actually see some more of the system when we do so. It's pretty, well, it's not actually really a standard motherboard. Um, you might be able to see a little bit better in there. There's not really much to see, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extract the floppy, which is no good, and the CD-ROM, actually, the DVD-ROM drive, because I want the drive face plates to match, and because I have no beige floppy drives, I'm basically stuck with using the black one, or a black one, or I could use one without a face plate, but because of that, I'm going to change the optical drive as well. I'm not going to lose any functionality, because as it turns out, this is already a DVD-ROM, so I thought it was a, a burner, and I was going to tell you that I don't no need to burn discs in this, because I've got my main machine back there, but uh, I don't have to worry about that. So I'll be right back once I've taken these drives out. Alright, and there are the two drives removed, revealing the hard drive as the lone remaining item. It's tempting to upgrade that as well, it's only an 80 gigabyte, but I'm going to leave it alone. It's very important to remember which holes the screws go in. Fortunately, I do. Okay, let's install the new drives. Well, that was a little bit of a pain, but the drives are both installed now. Floppy drive was easy. Two of the screws in the DVD were easy. One of them was kind of difficult, and the other one didn't really want to go in there at all, but I got it in there, doggone it. Alright, so let me put that back in the case, and we'll see if they work. They are, the seating room is jump, jumpered correctly, so I made sure to check that. Well, predictably that was kind of a pain, but I got it in there. Figured out I had two screws left over and kind of panicked. I was going to pull the whole thing all apart again, but I figured out where they went and put them in place. So now all i got to do is put the cover on and put it back over there. I must say that it actually does look pretty good. Although the beige definitely matched it a little better. It's not out of place. I think when you were buying these you could get them without drives and supply your own. So you could basically choose your own colors. And I'd imagine most people probably went for beige back when this thing was new. Okay, it's now back in place. It's a little cubby see if it still works. I have this power on here. Well, it appears to have survived. Let's see if the floppy works. Alright. Tried to read it. We'll have to see if it functions. We get a floppy to read. Okay, here we go. Other thing I'm going to do, ejecting that seems to work. Retracting it works. So let's try and read that floppy and see if it happens to be able to read it. It's still not working. Yeah. 
We have an issue here. That should be practically instant. Well, this one seems to be working. So, I don't know, maybe that floppy's bad. Well, let it actually read it fully into memory, make sure that all the tracks work. And then I'm going to try writing to it. Well, I don't know if this is going to go too well, because this machine actually read that disk that seemed to fail in this one. So, I'm going to figure out what this actually is. And that's actually Windows 3.1 disks. I probably shouldn't format that. Well, that's odd. I just read the disk, so... Okay, let's go ahead and... Well, we won't save. We'll open up an image. I don't know. How about the RAM doubler image? We'll try and format and write. Actually, on second thought, I'm going to double check this disk. I think this is actually the uh, attempted video driver for the Corel 386. Oh, come on, focus. So, let's see. Uh, VGA logo. MMWD 480. Yeah, this is the Western Digital. So, yeah, that can be formatted. Let's see if it works. Nope, that's not promising. No, that's not working. And it's not doing its job. It's not even reading. So it's it's not even trying. I'm trying to format it. Give me a minute. This thing is being stupid. Okay, I'm really starting to wonder about this a little bit because this is working fine. I was just able to format the disk. And it didn't seem to be too screwed up. I can go to the floppy. Let's try creating something on the floppy. I don't know, like a bitmap image. Sure. Open that up. Well, actually, probably not photo viewer. We'll open that. We'll go to edit. I don't know. Do something somewhat artsy. We... Save the changes. See if it still works. And it's writing. That's the hard drive going nuts. It's writing a lot of data. I wonder if it's actually got enough space for a bitmap image on it. It's still writing. Yeah, there we go. It's right there. 960 kilobytes. Generating preview, it's there. There's nothing wrong with it. So my program is apparently flaking out, and which probably means that I've replaced a floppy drive that there really wasn't anything wrong with. Do you want to reformat the disk? Sure. Oh, hold on a minute. Oh, I think I know what happened. Abort. Cancel. Yeah, I think I know what I did. Yeah, I probably replaced a floppy drive that there was nothing wrong. Nope, 1.44 mag. Okay. Format and write. Try again. Now that's working. Probably was actually set for 720k, to be honest with you. Which, of course, won't work because the track alignment's different. So yeah, I probably just replaced a floppy drive that really wasn't anything wrong with. Oh well, you got a video out of it. <laughs> so, I wouldn't complain too much as a viewer. Just that I wasted my time. But let me know if this floppy drive works. Well, it wrote the floppy. So let's go down here. Floppy out of the drive. Put it into this. 
Move ahead of our mouse. And reload. See what it happens to see. Zero items. That's great. Only 431 kilobytes of free space. Yeah, I'm sure that's a Linux problem, honestly. Probably have to unmount it. Let's try unmounting it. Or not. Maybe it'll ignore me. Eject. And remount it. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, it's working. No problem. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then. And no, I don't particularly care that it's still running Windows XP. It's a dedicated task machine, and although it's on the internet, I don't use it to communicate with the outside world. Well, okay, it communicates with the outside world, but I don't use the web browser or anything like that. I'm not actively interacting with it.